I promise we have finally made it to the very last video in this lecture. But in my defense, it's not just a lecture. I've walked through the entire first project with you. Um, so it's like a lecture and a project in one. So the last thing we need to do after we have completed the entire project, we have downloaded it, we fixed the file, we pre-flighted, we packaged, we exported, we printed, we did everything we need to do. It's time to submit your project. And there's two ways to submit projects um, in InDesign. You can either upload your files directly to Google Drive or you can upload your files directly to Canvas. And I don't mind if you upload them directly to Canvas, um, but Canvas has very low upload speeds, and so you might get frustrated by that, especially with Projects 1 and Project 6. The rest of them probably are not too bad because uh, they don't have a lot of pictures in them. But if you are frustrated by that and you can't get your file to upload, the better option is to use Google Drive. And so let's talk about submitting your project, and I'll show you how to do both ways. Before I do that though, I need to go into student view because I can't submit work in teacher view. And so give me a second, I'll jump over to that. Okay, when you're ready to submit the project, you're going to hit submit. And then you have the option to upload your file. You can upload multiple files. You can add a comment if you want to or you can upload a URL. Ignore that this says Google Drive and OneDrive for Business. This is not the way that we'll submit our Google Drive links. This is more like if you created a Microsoft Word document and you wanted to link to it. So we're just gonna use these first two options. You can choose to upload a .zip file or you can upload a link to your Google Drive. And so I'll go through the zip first and then we'll talk about Google Drive. And so once you're done your project and you're looking at the package folder and you're confident it has everything in it that you need, and you need to have all the things that you see except for you can have either a JPEGs or a PNG file folder. If you do both, it's just value added and I would be excited about that. And you don't need to have PostScript files if you are going to print uh, your projects. And if you print, instead of having PostScript files, you should have a folder in here that says physical prints and you can take sna um, photographic snapshots of those prints. You do not have to submit the physical prints on campus. I'm not looking at the quality of your print. I'm just looking if the settings that you chose are correct. Once you're confident that everything's good to go, you need to right click on your folder and choose to compress. If you're on a PC, it's something like right click, send to, compressed folder, or something like that. And when you do that, it's going to make a copy of your file and it's going to compress it into a zip file. It might be quite large, especially if you created those PostScript files, um, but this is the file that I want you to upload on Canvas. If you're working on Google Drive, you don't have to make a zip, you just have to have a folder. And I'll show you that when we, when we do Google Drive. In order to submit um, a file on Canvas, you are going to choose a file you'll find on your desktop, the zip folder that you created, and then you can select open. These are kind of large files, so then you'll hit submit, and then you'll wait, and you'll wait, and you'll wait, and you'll wait until you get a visual confirmation. And this is a large file, and Canvas does not really like uploading large files, so it could take a while. While we wait, oh, there we go. While we wait for that, um, we can go through the process of Google Drive. But because it finished, I just want to point out you should get a check mark that says, You turned this in, congratulations. And you should be able to go to your grades tab and you should be able to see a little piece of paper and that recognizes that you have submitted that file. If there is a dash mark, it means you have not submitted something. If there's a thought bubble, it means that it was a discussion and you posted something. And eventually those grades will be, those icons will be replaced with grades or scores for your project. Okay, going back to the project. Um, I would actually prefer you to use Google Drive to submit your coursework just because it's easier for you. It's actually more difficult for me to grade your project from Google Drive because if you upload directly to Canvas, I can batch download them in one click. I can say download everyone's projects and give me one file folder and I'll start grading. But with Google Drive, I've got to click on each one and individually download. Um, but I'd actually prefer you to do that because on your end, it'll be much easier. Um, you get to keep the files after the semester ends. When you upload, you don't have to worry about it not working and that kind of stuff. Everyone has a Google Drive, drive.google.com, if you are a student at Salt Lake Community College. And I'm going to log out just so I can show you how to get in. So when you go to drive.google.com, 
um, you will have the option to log in, whether it looks like mine or not. Mine's kind of auto jumping because I log in all the time. You can see I have students log in all the time too. Um, what you need to do is you need to log in using your Bruin mail and you would type in the entire address as the URL. Let me open up Firefox. Maybe I don't have the default login there. Nope. Find out. Let's try this again. Whoops. Okay, let's try Safari. And if it doesn't work in Safari, then I'll just have to assume that you can figure out where to enter your, your email. Okay, so this is what Google Drive will look like. I actually like to use Chrome, Google Chrome with it the best. I had a student today tell me that she's having issues with Google Drive and Safari, so keep that in mind. Um, when you're ready, you can go to Google Drive and then you can log in and it will look like this. And in order for it to work for your Bruin mail is you need to type in the entire email address, jcurran5 at bruinmail.slcc.edu. You don't want to put jcurran5 because it's not a Google account until you put at Bruin mail and then hit next. When you do that, you'll be redirected to the Salt Lake Community College login and it will say, oh, we know that your college has a contract or whatever with Google and now you can put your actual login, jcurran, oh, that's not, jcurran5, and then you can put your password in. It will direct you to the Google Drive homepage and you can change the way it looks. I kind of like the list. I actually normally don't like the list, but in Google Drive I do like the list. I have it organized in the way that I like it. For you, I would minimally like you to come up here and hit new and make a folder for Art 1200. And then inside that folder, if you right click it, you can change the color. I like to change the colors. Um, you can create a folder for each project. You can organize it in however you want. Um, but one of the benefits of Google Drive is that you can drag and drop stuff from your desktop directly onto Google Drive. And so I am dragging that and I am dropping it. So um, I'm going to switch to Chrome. I don't know if you saw that pop up. It said that drag and drop was not supported by Safari. So I'm going to go back to Google Chrome and I'm going to sign in with my Bruin mail. And I'm going to give that another shot. Okay, so I'm going to drag and drop the folder, move it over here. It's not only moving the folder, but it's moving all the contents of the folder over. And so I don't even have to compress it or zip it or anything if I don't want to. I could, if I wanted to, just drag and drop the zip, and then it's just one file to download. But once you move your file folder over, everything inside will come. And so that you can see all the files you have. If you wanted to, you could always come up here and you can uh, click on this drop down and you could tell it to download and it would recompress that file for you and then you would be downloading a zip. But whatever you decide, you need to put it on Google Drive and you need to create a link or you need to get a link that you can share with me slash your class. And so I'm going to cancel that download because we don't need to do it. So if you are going to post a zip file, you're going to select the zip and you're going to right click on it and you want to click on the share settings. When you click on the share settings, by default, Salt Lake Community College has, has some sort of preset that says that all of the files that you share on Google Drive or you post on Google Drive, by default, will be marked as private so nobody else can see them, nobody can kind of search the internet and come across your files. In order for you to share your files with me, you have to right click and, once it's done, you have to right click and you need to choose uh, share. It will open this little pop-up and yeah you could hit click shareable link or you could add my email address but I don't want you to do that. I want you to hit the advanced tab and I want you to change the access settings. So right now the default is private because you are using the Salt Lake Community College account. If you hit change you have a bunch of options and what I would like you to do is I would like you to change it to anyone at Salt Lake Community College who has the link can access the file. You can choose anybody at Salt Lake Community College or you could put anybody with the link or you could even say anybody who searches and it might come across it could see it. But at the very least you need to choose anyone at Salt Lake Community College with the link. Keep in mind 
that if you choose this and you use this to post your work and you share your work with your fellow classmates and they're not logged into their, their Bruin Mail email account, then they'll tell you that the link is broken. But all they have to do is log in with their Bruin Mail and they'll be able to see it. If you want to prevent getting those comments from students on critiques and things like that, I would choose anybody with a link because then people can't just randomly search for it. Um, but you won't have to have any issues if your classmates aren't signed in. They can still see the, the work that you're posting and sharing. And then by default, you'll see down here that just because you're, you're changing this setting doesn't mean people can edit your file. It's still that anybody with the link can view the files. We can hit save. And then you can hit done. Now, once you do that, you can use any of the options that Google Drive has to get a shareable link. So you can select the file and you can hit the little link on the top of the screen which will give you a link that you can share and copy. You can right click and you can choose to get the shareable link that way. It's the same idea. You're going to copy this link and in Canvas, when you go to submit the assignment, you'll go to the web URL and you'll post it. And when you hit submit, it should submit much faster and then you can check out the submission details. And this is exactly what I'll see when I go to grade it. I won't really see your project, but I'll open it in a new tab and I'll be able to see that you want to share the zip file with me and I'll download it. Now that's only if you did a zip file. If you did, whoops, if you did the option where you just move the folder over, it's the same process. So you're going to right click on the main folder and you're going to choose share. You'll go to the advanced tab. You'll change your access to anybody with the link or if you're not comfortable with that, you can read through the options. Um, but at the very least, you need to make sure that I can see it and I know enough that I will log in with my Brew email before I grade these. But I'm going to choose anybody with the link and hit save. Then it gave me the link to share here, but if you came back to it a week later, you could always right click and choose get the shareable link. And then you can copy the link there. And I'll submit the assignment one more time. Oops. And just to show you what the difference is, if I submit this, and then I look at the submission details. Now when I click to open a new tab, instead of having something that looks like this that says, okay, there's a zip there and you can download that file, you'll see the folder. And so everything that's inside the current 1B folder, I can now see. And what I'll do is I'll come up here and I'll hit download and I'll download your files. Okay, that, that wraps up our very long first lecture and everything that you need to do for project number one, or I guess I call them assignments in Art 1200. If you have any questions at any time during the semester, feel free to email me. My email is jkern5 at bruinmail.slcc.edu. My office is in room 1-165B at the South City campus. I'm always there. If the door is open, just walk in. And I'm happy to answer any questions you have, whether I'm your teacher or not. But you should try to go to your teacher first because um, it's kind of disrespectful to kind of go over their head and come to me. But let's say that they're just busy or they don't have office hours and they're okay with you coming to me for questions. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, that wraps it up.